which one to face. So let me face my usual one. Um, uh, on a, let me formally open and uh, also I'll indicate if you, you can indicate if there are any apologies, but uh, let me indicate that uh, I, was, I was called by uh, Honorable uh, uh, Monk saying that he went for a test on Saturday and they tested uh, uh, positive for the uh, coronavirus. Even though he has got uh, the two jabs, it means therefore you, you can still be infected. Oh, yes. uh, with the even if you have the two, but the only advantage is that uh, it, it's uh, mild. Uh, he's not hospitalized. Yeah, so he's taking uh, uh, care of himself. Um, yeah. uh, let me then formally welcome uh, honourable members uh, for attending the meeting, and also a special welcome uh, to honourable Ballet Bartlett. Uh, who's uh, standing in for Honorable uh, uh, Moimak. Um, can we have any other apologies? Uh, um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chief, if I can just go through the, um, we don't have any apologies from members aside from the one from Honorable Moimang that you indicated. Um, See so if I can maybe just go through the, um, the members in attendance. It's yourself, Honorable Bartlett, Honorable Mashodi, Honorable Pashoff, Honorable Bratiseth, and Honorable Apleni. So we've got six members in attendance, which means that we are operating. Okay. I see also Honorable uh, Amara Khan has just uh, logged in. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. And then, right. just, just, sorry, 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 she just, um, in terms of staff, we've got, um, um, I'll, um, I've got my co-committee secretary, uh, Ms. Um, Nozipi Udini Zulu, and then we've got our researchers, Mr. Abdullah Hanif and Mr. Zabeli Mitri. Okay. And uh, Mr. Ludumo? Uh, uh, again, I have that problem now. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? Oh, you are. We can hear you, Chair. Oh, oh, my dear, was uh, muted. <laughs> Mute, yes, yeah, no. I was muted. And then, Chair, yeah, just, just a little. Uh, yes, <laughs> so I thought was... the problem was on my side. <laughs> no, Lazuma is just entering the platform now. And then also now, um, Mr. Lanz, Honorable Lansman is also just joined, Chair. Oh, okay. No, no thanks very much. Um, let, let, let's then start the uh, continue with the business day. today the focus of the meeting is to adopt the minutes as well as the the reports i think there are three reports uh, that we will have to uh, adopt uh, as a committee uh, are we ready with the, the last week's minutes Hey, Chair, you are very strong, man. What are you using? You look powerful. <laughs> I'm using that thing. <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, Honorable Lansma. <laughs> okay. Can we uh, scroll down? I've got two screens here. They are confusing. I prefer this big one, but uh, when I look at it, I see that... Uh, the picture is looking also. Okay. Uh, are there any corrections or omissions, honorable members? Uh, if not, can we have a move by and the adoption for the minutes? Uh, thank you very much, honorable chairperson. I move for the adoption of the minutes, honorable Lydia Mushodi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, honorable Mushodi. Any seconder for the adoption of the minutes? 
those who were present in the last meeting. Okay, it's Honorable Basavka. I second the proposal in adopting the minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Boshov. Uh, is there any contrary view? Uh, not. Uh, the minutes have been adopted. Um, can we then go to the reports? Can we start uh, in terms of uh, uh, dates? Start with the one that we, the joint. Uh, a committee uh, oversight visit to uh, West Coast or Western Cape, let me put it that way, because we started in the CBD and then uh, also went to the West Coast. Can we fly that one? And uh, we perhaps go straight to the uh, recommendation because there are 21 pages. Uh, was taking us uh, through the recommendations. Uh, Lutumo, can you take us, because uh, I don't hear the, the response. Uh, can you take us through the recommendations, please? Is he connected? He's connected. Okay, he's connected, Chair. But um, while he's just busy um, connecting, we can always take over once he's able to. Um, I'll just then just read through the recommendations. Okay. Please. Uh, um, the oversight visit was mounted on the theme resetting the economy to boost economic growth, attract investments, and create jobs in regional and local economies. The committee took the following recommendations. Over the 20, 2021 medium term, the Minister of Transport, Provincial Minister responsible for transport in the city of Cape Town should, de should develop detailed plans to tackle current challenges in the public transport, especially rail. The deterioration of, rail of, of the rail service in the city of Cape Town with its, re with its resultant sharp increase in road usage needs to be addressed. The most pressing challenge facing the city of Cape Town's transport network and by extension its economic potential economic growth potential is in is the decline of rail. Number two, the Minister of Transport and the Provincial Minister responsible for transport together with the City of Cape Town should improve coordination in terms of regulating the taxi industry. Evidence shows that most South Africans use taxi to travel to work, to school and work, and modernization of the taxi industry should be accelerated. Recommendation three, over the 2021 medium term, national, provincial, and local governments should scale up coherency for land development and planning. A spatial mismatch with disconnections with, between people, skills, jobs, and investment hold back social and economic progress. Recommendation four, over the 2021 medium term, both the City of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality should accelerate the implementation of township economy strategies. Recommendation five, shared working spaces for entrepreneurs and small, business, small enterprises, including small traders, remain an essential priority. The Minister of Small Business Development and the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, including Provincial Minister responsible for enterprise development and public works in the City of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality in partnership with the private sector, should establish shared working spaces to support growth and expansion of SMMEs and small traders. Recommendation six, further, the city of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality should, over the 2021 medium term, devise strategies and plans to tackle regulatory constraints that are hindering the operations and expansion of small traders. Recommendation seven, the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition and the Minister of Small Business Development through the development agencies such as CEDA and CIFA and the NEF should work in a 
co coordinated manner with SASRIA to identify financial literacy and empowerment campaigns targeting small businesses and informal traders. Such programs should find expression in the expenditure plans of the respective departments and development agencies, including expenditure plans of SASRIA. The Financial Literacy and Empowerment Initiative should get the necessary support from National Treasury. Further, uh, recommendation eight, further, the City of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality should, through the enterprise development agencies or business components, design outreach programs to encourage small businesses, including informal enterprises, to take up business insurance covers. Recommendation nine, there is a need for SASRIA to accelerate the rollout of insurance products that would cover the underserviced communities. Hence, the Minister of Finance should ensure that SASRIA design implementation plans that would enable the underserviced communities to take insurance cover. Recommendation 10. Over the medium term, the Minister of Employment and Labour, City of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality, in partnership with institutions of higher education and training and industry players, should establish and solidify job placement opportunity initiatives, including skills and training initiatives to tackle unemployment and close the skills gap. Recommendation 11. Over the 2021 medium term, the Minister of Tourism and the Minister of Finance, in partnership with the provincial and local governments, including developmental agencies, in partnership with private sector banks, should innovative should develop innovative finance mechanism that would meaningfully support the recovery and growth of the tourism industry. Recommendation 12. Over the medium term, the Minister of Finance should reconsider to reintroduce the 12J venture capital incentive to broaden the base of capital as alternative instrument to finance SMMEs. The tourism industry has been severely affected by COVID-19. Many jobs and businesses have been lost in the economy. Innovative solutions in terms of financing businesses, both formal and informal, should be found. Recommendation 13. Crime remains one of the risks that deters growth and the expansion of the tourism industry. The city of Cape Town, including the West Coast District Municipality, working closer with South African police services and local communities, should devise measures to tackle crime. Um, can I just pause there? Can everybody hear me, Chief? Or am I, am, I going, um, too, am I going too fast? Am I, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. We can okay, hear you. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Recommendation 14. Minister of Tourism and the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries should continue to work in a collaborative manner with the provincial government, the city of Cape Town and the West Coast District Municipality to improve public infrastructure and attract private investment to support growth of tourism and enhance alignment environment tourism products. Access to tourism platforms for local communities should be prioritized. Recommendation 15. A West Coast District Municipality, together with the Western Cape Department of Agriculture, including the National Departments of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Forestry, Fisheries and Environmental Affairs, as well as development finance agencies such as Land Bank, need to form development initiatives in collaboration with industry players to restore investment and business confidence in the agricultural industry and further support growth of SMMEs in the industries such as agriculture and fisheries. Recommendation 16, the West Coast District Municipality is one of the fastest growing economic regions in the Western Cape Province. As such, higher levels of economic activity, which would result to, which would result to, to an increase in business and job opportunities, would certainly cause growth in population and increase pressure on the provision of physical, social, economic and environmental infrastructure. To this end, over the 2021 medium term, the national and provincial ministries responsible for spatial and development, de development planning should support the district to improve spatial and development planning to improve alignment in terms of investment in infrastructure in areas such as tran transport, energy, water and sanitation environment, including housing. The SBIDZ, the Saldana Bay um, Industrial Development Zone, I think it is, could only succeed if it continues to cement relations with key strategic partners such as the Western Cape Department of Economic Development and Tourism, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Competition, the Ministry of Public Enterprise, Transnet, TNPA, Small Business Development, including the Ministry of Higher Education, Training and Innovation, and the Saldana Bay Municipality, local businesses and community, including the Western Cape 
government's departments of transport, public works, environmental affairs and, and development planning and health. National ministries of finance, including SARS, employment and labor and financial development institutions such as IDC, the Development Bank of South Africa. Over the 2021 medium term, the strategic partners mentioned in the section should, import, should support the SBIDZ to sustain its operations and build capacity and capability in, in, by unlocking barriers so that the SBIDZ gain much needed financial and policy capital in order to realize its strategic objectives. And this is this report is to be considered. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Watia. Uh, can I now invite uh, comments, uh, if there are any corrections or omissions on the whole report, not just the, the recommendations. Uh, if members have uh, comments to make, and uh, corrections, or also if there are some omissions, uh, members are free to, uh, to make those comments uh, before uh, we adopt the report. Any comments? Okay, uh, in the absence of uh, any comments, we will then deal with the adoption of the report in the following manner. Uh, in terms of the rules, uh, rule 155, uh, that this, uh, the heading is on quorums and decision, except when a question is decided, business may, proceed irrespective of the number of members present. When a question that does not fall under section 75 of the constitution is to be decided, a committee members representing at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of constitutional amendments must be present and B, the question is decided by the supporting vote of at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of a constitutional amendment. So I will, I will end on, on two, uh, 1552 A and B, because it uh, apply uh, on this particular report, where we will need at least uh, five provinces uh, to vote on the, on the, on the on this report. Can I therefore have uh, those who are voting in favor of the adoption of the bill, if they can raise their hands, if uh, they are able to do so. But if you can't uh, raise your hand, you can indicate, uh, uh, yeah, by saying it aloud. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mushodi from the First State, I vote in favor of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mushodi. Um, can I indicate, can we indicate by show of hands? And Honorable please. Landsman, I vote in favor, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Landsman. Are there any other hands? Okay. Can Honorable Bartlett. Yeah. Honorable Butler, yes, I see. I see your hand. Uh, I see. Uh, are you able to calculate, uh, Ms. Matia, and also include the, the 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 three honorable members? Uh, maybe you can exclude the honorable Butler because she has already indicated that though she has uh, raised her hand. Yes, she. Um, I see, honorable. Um, just a, just to note. Oh, she, also, honorable, honorable Lansman is there. Uh, yeah. Honorable Lansman, Honorable Pratusit, and Honorable Mamarahan have all um, as well raised their hands. So, so we have got we've yeah. got the five we've got the five provinces. And Honorable Boshop as well. And Honorable Boshop as well, yes. So how many provinces? In fact, now we've got six provinces she, in support of the, the report. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any members who are voting against the B? Oh, sorry, report. Okay. Are there any yes, who are uh, uh, abstaining? Abstaining, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, voting uh, against. Against? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Any other members who are voting against the bill? I mean, the report? Okay. So we have six members voting in favor of the report and one member voting against. So the, the report is uh, therefore adopted. Uh, thank you very much. Can we then uh, lower our hands and uh, ask uh, Ms. Matia to flight uh, the next report? Okay, I'm gonna ask, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, she. I'm going to ask Enrico to to take over with um, projecting chair, and then um, Luduma indicated that he's having challenges with his sound, so I will um, read out the recommendations for the second report as well, chair. Oh, this one that is flighted. Yes, I will, I will read out the recommendations because Luduma indicated that he's having problems with his sound. Okay, uh, Enrico, can you then go down to the recommendations, please? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Just move uh, up. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Enrico. Okay. Uh, recommendation one the committee noted that deteriorating logistics network and infrastructure could derail government's ER ERRP. Hence, it's important to invest in the ports, rail, and energy, including water and sanitation infrastructure. To this end, the committee recommends that the Minister of Public Enterprises sh sh should submit to the committee before the end of the 2022-23 financial year the feasibility study, which is expected to determine whether it is feasible to increase the capacity of the East London port, including the initiative to expand the automotive terminal. Recommendation two. Further, the committee recommends that over the 2020, 2020, 2022 medium term, the Minister of Transport, the Minister of Executive Council responsible for transport and the Buffalo City Municipality with the support of national and provincial treasuries should formulate a plan that should that should that all should also entail financing and funding mechanisms to accelerate the implementation of the public transport development program in the Buffalo City Metro. Recommendation three, the member of executive provincial Provincial Executive Council responsible for economic development, environment, environmental affairs and tourism should engage the provincial treasury to consider funding the Invest SA ECOSS to improve its organizational capacity and capability in order to fulfill its policy obligations. Funding should be set aside in the 2022 medium term and the fund should be earmarked. Recommendation four. The committee recommends that ministers responsible for transport, energy, water and sanitation and public enterprises and ICT should develop in, in a collaborative approach with the Eastern Cape Provincial Government and the affected district municipalities an integrated plan for the investment and development of the Eastern Side Region and the Eastern Cape Province. The plan should be submitted to the committee before the end of the 2023-24 financial year. Recommendation 5. Further, the committee recommends that the BCMM and the BCMDA um, should submit to the committee the plan that will develop all development projects within the region. The plan should be submitted by the end of the 2021-22 financial year. Recommendation six, the committee further recommends that the, the Select Committee on Public Enterprises and Communications and the Select Committee on Security and Justice should convene a joint meeting by inviting the Ministers of Police, Justice and Correctional Services to address the slow pace of finalizing investigation and prosecution of the alleged acts of corruption and, and mal maladministration relating to, um, to SOEs. And that is the final recommendation, Jim. 
thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mati. Uh, can I invite uh, comments? Uh, if there are any additional points or if there are any omissions in the report? Uh, if not, can I then, can we then vote uh, in line with the, the rules that are read earlier? Uh, rule um, 155, uh, 2A and, and B. Can we do that by show of hand? And also if uh, uh, those who would like to indicate can do so uh, by indicating how they are voting. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mishwedi from the Free State, I vote in favor of the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Mushodi. Um, are there any other members who are voting for, on, on, uh, in favor of the report? Can we vote by the show of hands? Honorable uh, Bartlett, uh, yes. in favor. Yeah, my network is bad. Can you please repeat? I lost network. Uh, we, we, are, we are voting now. I want to check uh, those who are voting in favor uh, can do so. I'm in if favor, Chairman. Sorry for the network. Sorry, are you voting in favor? Yes, I'm in favor. I support. Oh, okay. Thanks, Chair. With, with the inclusion of Mr. Lansman, we've got six members for six provinces in support of the report. It's Honorable, it's yourself, Honorable Mamarihana, Honorable Mashodi, Honorable Bartlett, Honorable um, Bashop, and Honorable Lansman. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can we get uh, uh, those who are voting against? Uh, Honorable. Uh, a plane is voting against the adoption of the report. Um, let me <laughs> lower my hand. <laughs> Sorry. So we have how many voting in favor? Six, Chair. We've got six, six members voting, voting in favor and one voting against. So the report is uh, adopted. Uh, can we go to the other report? I think there's free state. Scroll down to the recommendations, please. Can you read them out for us, uh, Ms. Matia? We'll do so, Chief. Um, if I can just indicate, I just got a message from uh, Mr. Abtini to say that, um, I must indicate that you know, on, the, on his behalf that there's serious lighting in these areas, so you can't participate. Oh. Okay, so I'll just go straight to the recommendations. Okay, recommendation one, the committee noted the potential of the Maluti Apofong Special Economic Zone and the Industrial Parks to ignite um, the Puta Dichaba and the Bochabella to ignite economic growth and attract investments and create much needed jobs if the necessary infrastructure such as road, rail, energy and water and sanitation could be provided. The committee recommends that the ministers responsible for transport, energy, water and sanitation, including public enterprises, should develop an integrated plan in partnership with provincial and local government authorities to strengthen and enhance growth at the um, MA, MAP SEZ and the industrial parks. The, the plan should be developed and submitted to the committee by the end of the 2022-23 financial year. Recommendation two. I think this is um, the Free State of Provincial Department of Economic Development. Through the Free State Development Corporation, with the support of the Minister, Minister of Trade, Industry and Com Competition, working in partnership with the relevant local authorities and the National Treasury City Support Program Industrial Park Revitalization, 
Minister of Small Business Development should develop a plan that will ensure the financial sustainability of the MAP, SEZ and the industrial parks. The plan should be submitted to the committee by the end of the 2022-23 financial year. Um, scroll down. Um, recommendation three, the Mangaung Metro, with the support of the provincial, provincial government and the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, should develop a revenue generation strategy and an action plan to improve service delivery in the Metro. The strategy and action plan is expected to be submitted to the committee by the end of the 2021-22 local government financial year. The provincial um, recommendation five, the, the provincial MEC responsible for agriculture and rural development in partnership with the DSTIA in, that is the three-step provincial department of economic development, in collaboration with the minister responsible for agriculture, land reform and rural development, and the minister for trade, industry and competition, and working with the industry players should develop a plan that will ensure growth and development of the agriculture industry in the province. Transnet should, should finalize the agricultural um, transformation and growth strategy. The Transnet's agriculture and transformation and growth strategy should be integrated to the plan that will ensure the growth and development of the agricultural industry in the province. The committee is expecting that the plan is to be submitted by the end of the 2022-23 financial year and report is to be considered. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Matia. Are there any comments? Any comments? Hey. Yes, uh, Honorable uh, Bosho. Um, may I just ask, were we not, did we not ask the Metro to provide answers to our questions within seven days? Yes, we did, including the a transnet. That's right. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, you're Chief, right. If I, if I can, can just kind of I just check if we receive those, uh, Ms. Mati? Yes, yes, Chief. If, if I can just give feedback in that regard. Um, in terms of the responses, um, the written responses from the, the, the people who needed to submit the responses was the DTIC, the Mango, Metro, and Transnet. Yeah. Out of the three, the only people we received responses from was the DTIC, and their responses were actually included in the report. We've been following up with the Transnet and Mangaung Metro because, in fact, the due date for submission was last week, Monday. So we've been following up with them ever since. And the only people who gave us responses, like I said, was DTIC. Transnet said that the responses were ready, but they were waiting for sign off. We still didn't get anything yet. And the Mangaung Metro hasn't given us any feedback whatsoever. What I did is that I contacted the provincial, um, um, the, the parliamentary liaison officer for the Department of Public Enterprises last week, as well as today, to let them know that the responses from Transnet, Transnet was actually outstanding, and the committee was actually expected to finalize its report today. So, like I said, from out of the three, the only one who responded was DTIC, um, and the Transnet and Mangong Metro have not submitted the responses to it. Can I suggest then we 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 don't consider the report, and uh, that uh, I should then perhaps write to the chairperson of the NCOP, uh, so that the, the the that office of the NC, of the chairperson uh, could follow up on these matters, and then once we receive the uh, the outstanding the information that then will be included in the report that will then be adopted as soon as uh, we receive the, the, the outstanding information. Can we agree on that, uh, Honourable Members? Honourable Chair, um, Honourable I Pasha. propose that we adopt your um, decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any contrary view? Yes. Honourable Chairperson, I think I Apart support the view of Honourable uh, Boshoff. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, that's what then we will do. We will write to the chairperson so that the chairperson interacts with the uh, speaker of the province uh, on the on the outstanding information, um, including uh, writing to uh, the relevant department that is responsible for uh, Mangahu. But also we, the chair will also write to the minister uh, or the leader of government business with regard to uh, Transnet, because it's under the Department of Public uh, Enterprises. 
So we agree that we'll take uh, that route. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. I think that was then the last uh, item on the agenda. Oh, there's a, I don't know, you, the, there's the adoption of uh, the 20, the first term uh, program. Can we fly the first term program of uh, 2022? Uh, Enrico? This is a, a 2022, uh, the first term. Uh, in terms of the framework, uh, committees will start working on the 22nd. Uh, I think so other dates uh, before that uh, would include the NCOP uh, issues, such as I think the strategic plans, um, sauna and sauna debates so that's why we'll start a bit late but also according to the program the ncop uh, i think this time around there's a very long uh, leave up until the 29th of uh, uh, january and then the first day yeah the, from the 10th the state of the nation address on the 10th uh, which is a joint city followed by other NCOP activities. So that's why we're only starting on the 22nd. I was also surprised because it's too late. Uh, could be that the last week. So in February, we'll only have one day, which is the 22nd. And then after that- Recording the stopped. NCOP strategic annual review session. Recording in progress. Can we have a mover and the adoption of the first term program? Honorable members. Lansman, I I moved here, sorry for the no, face. Mama Rehan, move. Okay. I'll say Mama Rehan, move, and Honorable Lansman, a second. Any contra review? No contra review. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable members. Uh, this was the last meeting for this committee. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, your attendance uh, uh, throughout the year, the participation. Uh, we, we really thank you very much uh, for your attendance and uh, your participation. We know that uh, we, as we were continuing, uh, there was also the, the elections uh, that uh, uh, put hold on some of our, our, our meetings, uh, but we really uh, appreciate uh, your participation uh, throughout the, uh, the year. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable members. Thank you, Chair. Hey, you look strong. You are powerful. Chairman, you look like a powerful man. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 Um, just from our side as well, thank you very much. And may I take this opportunity to wish everybody a wonderful festive season yes. and to request that everybody stay safe. And may I suggest, like we did with you, just to send our speedy recovery as members of this committee to Honorable Moyamang. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. I second, Chair. I second. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Team. Really Just one last it. thing, Chair. Yes, one yes. last thing. Omicron, don't buy. Omicron, don't buy. Omicron, yes. don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, see you again uh, the next day in the committee. They will be seeing each other tomorrow uh, in the Transport uh, Select Committee on Transport. Uh, for this committee. Thank you so much. And also thanks to the staff uh, of the committee uh, for the assistance uh, that they've been providing to the committee. We really appreciate uh, uh, your assistance. Thank you very much. The meeting is at chain. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much.
Recording stopped.